Hi, I'm Denshi, and in today's video, I want to talk about Pipewire. Now, the reason I want to talk about it is because it has legitimately improved and changed the way that I use audio on my Linux system. And I'll talk about some examples of what I've been able to do with Pipewire. But first of all, if you want to do advanced audio on Linux, then you probably know about Jack, the Jack Audio Connection Kit. It's software that you can run and then basically use your entire computer as a massive audio workstation. Plug that program into that program, this output into that output, and basically one big problem with Jack is that it's very difficult for you to plug in programs uh, that don't support it into it. So for example, this web browser, Chrome right over here, it uses Pulse Audio, which is a different audio service daemon, which is more so meant for multimedia consumption and just people who, you know, want to watch YouTube videos or do voice and video calls and stuff, not really professional audio production. Now, the great thing about Pulse Audio and Jack is that there is a way to make them work together, but it is very complicated to set up. And I was trying to figure it out. I was able to figure out it eventually after a million in YouTube tutorials, uh, but this entire time that I was setting that up, I could have just been using Pipewire. So Pipewire, it replaces Pulse Audio and Jack if you install those modules. And then it's able to essentially let any program that works with Pulse Audio, like Google Chrome, for example, or Firefox, and let it output and receive input through Jack. Now that sounds like a bunch of technical jargon, so I'm actually going to show you this uh, with an example. The first thing you want to do is actually install it though. So if we open our terminal, you know, make it big over here. On Arch Linux, you want to install the following packages, Pipewire-Jack, Pipewire-Alsa, and pipewire Pulse. This is the replacement for Pulse Audio, this is the replacement for Jack, and this is so it can actually interface with your uh, Alsa system, which is what's already built into Linux. Now, QJack CTL is a graphical interface to manage all of this, so you probably want to install that, uh, even if you're not using Pipewire's version of Jack. That's just a useful tool. Now, once you install this, you might actually get a prompt that asks you to replace Pulse Audio with Pipewire. If it prompts you with that, just type yes and press enter. And then after you've installed these packages, all you have to do is reboot your system and log back in, and then you'll be able to run Jack and all that stuff, and it works perfectly. So let's take a look at that. The first thing I'm gonna show you is QJack CTL, which is this program over here, which you can use to stop and start the daemon. So I'm gonna stop it over here and I'm going to start it over here with the graph menu you can begin editing all of the audio things on your system so over here there's a bunch of other audio devices but more importantly there's the recording session that you're looking at right now with me recording my audio from my microphone which is this device over here my speakers are plugged into OBS my recording software uh, because it's monitoring them for any desktop audio just in case you know there's audio from my computer and I want to record it and over here are my speakers which at the moment aren't plugged into anything because I'm not playing anything back now, the real power of Pipewire working with Pulse and Jack all together in this big package is whenever you start any other program, like for example, if I try to start a web browser right now uh, and I go to, I don't know, YouTube and I go to one of my videos, like I think my, you know, my very, very official, you know, Linux installation tutorial right over there. As you can see, Chrome has attached itself to my speakers. And now if I want to record Chrome specifically as a program, I can go and disconnect it from my speakers. Maybe I can keep it connected to my speakers if I want to. Oh, there, there it goes away because I've stopped playing the video. Uh, but if I play the video again, there, there it comes back. And I can connect that to my OBS. And now when I play this back, it will record it as well. Now, obviously that hasn't, that makes no sense because it's already passing through my speakers and my speakers are passing through here. Uh, but you get the idea, right? I can specify what apps and programs that I'm recording. And that is very, very powerful. I'm just going to disconnect this because I don't want it active. You can pretty much plug anything you want to this, but where this really gets crazy is when you start working with audio workstations. So let me give you an example over here in Ardor, which is a very popular audio workstation for Linux. As you can see, Ardor has already plugged itself into my system. Uh, it's plugged my microphone into its input and it's plugged its output to my speakers. Uh, you'll also notice over here that in Ardor are microphones, other microphones available on my system are plugged in. This is, I think, the digital microphone from my computer. These are the headset microphones. If you plug in the headphone jack, those are separate devices. You can capture those separately if for some reason you want to. And uh, I'm not actually going to connect these. I'm going to disconnect these because I don't want them working ever. I never use those microphones. I always use the dedicated one. But basically, imagine for a second that I'm, you know, working around here in Ardor, got, you know, music or something. I don't have any here, but if I created a new MIDI track or something and started placing notes down, you know, like do, 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 like that or something, and I'm, I'm playing with music, or I'm just outputting the MIDI through a device, like a keyboard that I have, then what you can do over here 
is you can take this Arder, you can disconnect it from your speakers or keep it connected if you want to. Uh, and then take some other program. Like, let's say I'm on a Jitsi call. I'm gonna join the meeting over here. As you can see, I'm talking through it, right? But what I could do instead is, this is the input for Google Chrome, right? I'm gonna disconnect this and I'm gonna connect it to the master audio in Ardor. So now, everything that passes through my audio workstation to the master bus, which is where all the audio passes through, and I start playing those funky notes like that, that comes out over here on Jitsi. Now this is very, very powerful because it means that now, let's say I want to uh, do music live, for example, show music to people or friends on the call. Maybe you're doing some kind of recording and you want people on the call to be able to hear the audio of what you're doing. Or maybe I'm streaming with OBS and I want to uh, connect up my audio workstation so people can listen to me while I'm working on music or, or something like that. You can do that thanks to this system. But anyways, I've been rambling for far too long. I'm pretty sure you can tell what the point of this video is, that you should use Pipewire now. But anyways, I've been Denshi. This has been my video. Goodbye.